Hi, this is Lee Garrett and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. We're talking calendars today and I'm excited about this one because it's the application I've used personally as my macOS calendar for the last couple of years. And in researching this video, I found yet more features that I haven't been taking advantage of. Now, BusyCal has been around for a long time, but when people talk about third party calendar applications, Fantastical is usually the one that you're going to hear about because of its design and feature rich experience. Well, if we're talking features, BusyCal is right up there in the conversation. So much so that I've had to split it into two videos. So this first one is going to cover the basics of adding calendars, looking at the different event types, managing the interface and more. Whereas in the second video, we're going to look at some of the extra features such as tagging events, smart filters and calendar sets, as well as a lot more features. There's a considerable amount to cover, so let's get straight to it. Now, first of all, as well as being available as a standalone purchase, BusyCal is available as part of your setup subscription if you have one. And there's a very good reason for taking the subscription up. So I'm gonna install it directly here. It's a fairly large install, so it takes a little time. Okay, it's installed and I've enabled the permissions that BusyCal needs. So access to contacts, it needs to run in the background and notifications what I've enabled so far. Now I'm ready to set up, so I click continue. So first of all here, BusyCal would like access to location services and that's because you can see weather updates on the individual days of your calendar. And it's also useful for calculating travel time from your location. So I'll click continue here. BusyCal would now like to access reminders and that's because you can display your reminders lists in BusyCal and check your tasks off. So this will be allowed. It says once more that it wants access to notifications. Now I have already granted this whilst the video was paused. Then next we can add our first account. So there are two main types of accounts. You've got a cloud-based one like iCloud, Google, Yahoo and so on or you can have a local one that is just visible on your machine. Now we can see here it's defaulting to an iCloud calendar. If I click the drop down, these are the different ones that can be added to BusyCal. Now I'll add one more calendar type later, but for now I'm gonna stick with iCloud and I need to type in my Apple ID, which is already there, and then an app specific password. So this isn't your Apple ID password, but one that you specifically grant to BusyCal to access your iCloud calendars. So it literally is app specific. You get guidance on how to create one by clicking on this support article link here. I've already got one, so I'm gonna pause and add it. Okay, the password is entered, we're all set, and I can join the mailing list if I wish. I am already on there though, so I'll select no thanks. And here we have my default view of BusyCal on its first run. Now I've not changed anything here, so it's similar to what you're gonna see in terms of the layout the first time that you run it. And we'll go through this interface shortly for you after we've added another calendar source in here. But first, I'm just gonna quickly pause and resize this window to make it easier to see. 